for the political angle on a possible well-timed procurement. We've gathered National Defense Parliamentary Secretary James Bazan, who joins us in Winnipeg, NDP MP for British Columbia, Murray Rankin, who is in Victoria, and Liberal Defense critic Joyce Murray, who is in Vancouver. James, starting with you, the federal government has known that you were going to run out of a supply ship long before now. Why has a decision not been made about how to fill this gap? The Royal Canadian Navy has been looking at all options. Uh, Vice Admiral uh, Norman uh, has uh, looked at a number of different possibilities and uh, has uh, also uh, taken some of those ideas to the minister and, and uh, cabinet will consider all those options. Now, there's no doubt that uh, we are found ourselves in a situation where we're between uh, the uh, end of the lifespan uh, of our, our current supply ships uh, till when we get our first uh, joint supply ships back on stream which are being built at Vancouver shipyards and uh, of course uh, they, they're going to start cutting steel in 2017 and the first ship will be available 2020. So we are looking at that gap and how we fill it and working with our allies uh, and other uh, possibilities uh, on how we ensure that the Royal Canadian Navy can do all the tasks that is called upon by the Government of Canada. Murray, going to you, is this jeopardizing the Navy? We're talking about five years without the ability to resupply ourselves if the commercial vessel is not retrofitted. Of course it is. And we've heard this from people like uh, former Commander McLean of the HFCS Protector, who says we have a major, major hole here. This is just another example of the mismanagement of the Navy and the whole procurement process by this government. It's really quite pathetic. I live in an area where we have a lot of uh, Navy personnel and I hear this all the time. They just throw up their hands and saying, what, can't they manage this? It's taking a decade to get the next group on time, the next uh, uh, Queenston class uh, ships. And in the meantime, they're talking about these retrofits. And in the meantime, how are they making our coast safer and our sure, international commitments more secure? They're not. It's, a just, it's just a joke. Uh, I'm going to go back to you, James. I, you know, as we've heard, this is not a surprise. Uh, the decision, if it is made to go ahead with retrofitting uh, a commercial ship, would go to Davy Shipyard. The other two shipyards are occupied with federal government proje projects. But some people are saying, uh, you know, is this the best shipyard to handle it? Well, uh, Davy is doing work already for the Government of Canada and retrofitting some of our uh, Canadian Coast Guard vessels. Uh, they've uh, already conducted work on three of our Canadian Coast Guard vessels. Uh, but the National Shipbuilding Program, and let's get back to what Murray just said, the, the NDP supported this, 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 this procurement strategy. It's a 30-year strategy, yeah. $2 billion dollars per year, and then we're talking about an investment in the long term in, in the Royal Canadian Navy and making sure that we have all the capabilities and the ships we need to do the job. We just finished retrofitting uh, uh, all our Halifax class frigates. Uh, they're an amazing ship with the mo most modern technology on, on board and are doing amazing work around the world. And let's also remember uh, that, that when the Royal Canadian Navy deploys, we do it as always as part of an alliance, uh, just as we do with everything we do in the Canadian Armed Forces. And so when we do deploy, we are going out there uh, uh, with our allies who also have supply ships that make sure that, that our well, frigates James, you're, you're, uh, you're right uh, that we can do, do the job that we're tasked with. We do often operate with allies, but without the ability to offer resupply, and soon with the Iroquois class destroyers gone, we won't be able to command international task forces anymore. Uh, Joyce, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but I'm wondering what the Liberal position is on whether this ship should be retrofitted, this commercial ship at Dafee Shipyard. Well, look, first let me say that this is really another um, example of this government's failure to de deliver on military procurement. Uh, there's been a string of announcements going back to 2006 and virtually nothing completed and concluded. Uh, the, the need to replace the supply ships has been known since the 1980s. It was already a high priority in 2006, uh, but the gov this government failed to put an adequate plan and financing in, places, in place, so they've been stumbling wrong. on this, and that's why there's Completely this wrong. now this gap uh, between the retirement of the previous supply ships and the projected uh, date for the new ones. Well, We're talking 2020 for the new joint supply ships, but who knows when they will actually be done. 
we've actually heard that the 45-year-old former supply ships that were retired, uh, that the um, procurement people were having to go to eBay to find replacement parts because they were so old and uh, keeping them intact was an enormous uh, challenge and a safety challenge. So it, uh, the reality is, and uh, Commander Norman really acknowledged this, that the Navy has not been able to carry out its responsibilities without being able to resupply and refuel ships out in the Pacific. And uh, so there was a need to find an interim solution. Let's not forget this interim solution is additional taxpayer dollars that will need to be spent. And uh, really, it's been a bungled procurement that could have been uh, could have been done properly with pr proper management and more focus on actually delivering than announcing. Okay, James, when you look at this, uh, Davy Shipyard is in an area that is critical for conservative votes. Is this, if it goes ahead, using procurement as a way to get ballots instead of, uh, you know, moving earlier on this? No, this is about making sure that we make the purchases that are necessary uh, so the Royal Canadian Navy and the Canadian Armed Forces can do the jobs that we task them with. Uh, we have a, a, a Navy that is very competent and capable. Uh, you know, despite what, what Joyce just said, you know, the Liberals never bought a single piece of kit the entire time that they were in government for 13 years. You know, it's taken us a while to fix all the problems that they left us with, but we uh, have a strategy. We are moving ahead. There is steel getting cut on both sides of the of uh, Canada right now uh, in following through with the national shipbuilding is, strategy. Is steel going already, to be already, or, is steel going to be cut on the supply ship? Yeah, they're going to start cutting 2017. steel in 2017. You're not going to do no, it well, before you that. Remember that you got to remember that, the, the, that, that the Vancouver shipyard is also doing our science vessels, our Arctic uh, uh, ice breaking vessels, and so those are already in, in the queue and, and are moving first, and right after that become, comes the joint supply ships. So yeah, we are looking at how we, 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 we fix uh, the situation that we face right now in the gap. Cabinet's looking at, at, at what possibilities that are there, and that's uh, and everything take from working 15 months closely to get with it our together, allies. They use a temporary no, fix. Okay, I want to give a chance to yeah, Murray to get in here. Murray, uh, what's your your take on this? It's, Should they go ahead with the My Davey? take on it, it's just more mismanagement. It's taking 10 years to get to the new ships, the, the Queenston level ships. Meanwhile, if they do retrofit now, it'll take 15 months before we're ready. In the meantime, how is our security at sea, both at home and abroad, being secured? It's not. It's just more mismanagement of the Navy by the Conservatives. Period. Full stop. And if we had the well, I can, I'd like to add to that. Go ahead, Joyce. Yes. Yes. Hang on, Joyce. As well. Go ahead. And blah, that's blah, that blah. Uh, James Bazan and the government's key strategy is still blaming a previous government from 10 years ago. If they put that effort into actually managing procurement effectively, they would have delivered on equipment. I mean, the reality is they cut hundreds of procurement experts out of national defense, even as, as adding a very extensive uh, set of equipment procurements without putting priorities in place. And so it's no wonder that this has all failed. At the same time, they, this government has lapsed $7 billion of funding that was announced, that was approved by parliament, and then actually clawed back that was intended for military equipment. This is a historic thing, actually. 23% of the funds that were allocated to military equipment purchases in what's called Boat 5 were clawed back. Okay, we have to wrap it up there. In the 70s, 2% of the military equipment was allowed to lapse. So this government has made decisions to use the military budget to help them provide tax breaks for this coming election. Okay, we have to, we have to wrap up there because we are out of time. But I'd like to thank our MPs yeah. for coming in today. Clearly, it's a very controversial issue uh, and one that has to be decided on by Cabinet as it cycles back for the third time. Thank you very much. Right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.